Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Babel. With me today here is Arctic Shadow. Ace match, just like the standard Malaysian tradition. It is always the Malaysians that reach down to the end of the wire that likes to play the rubber set that ends the tournament at 4 a.m. in the morning. So <laughs> we are now going into the final match that will decide it all. Are you excited? I think you're muted. Sorry All right, that. welcome yep. back. <laughs> yeah, I am really, really excited for this game. I apologize for the mute there. Uh, but yeah, FFKG, you know, has come, it's been a really long day. So this is going to be the final, final game. And FFKG, I'm not too sure if it's a choke or in the last two games, you know, they made a, a questionable draft in the second game before uh, they lost in the last game due to a, a, a mistake that they made, a few mistakes that they make. So hopefully they will be able to get it after composure. And as we mentioned before, I don't know who's going to win this one. It's going to go either way here. Yep, it's gonna be it's really gonna be one match to decide them all, one ring to rule them all. We are now going to the ace match. I'm excited. Let's go into the draft. Um K I think FFKG. Fong Fei K gaming. Yeah, FFKG versus Perspective. The draft is almost complete actually, and it is again gonna be Towers of Doom. Are we excited? Wow. Is it gonna be Vikings 2.0? FFKG, do they have a point <laughs> to prove? I don't know, I... we'll have to see. I don't think it's going to be a Vikings this time around here. Uh, let's go see, looking at the bands, we see Zagara and Mel Muradin being banned out here. Uh, Diablo and Tyr on the other side. So I guess some respect bands coming out here. We saw Prospectus MY win with all the Zagara games. I think they, it was three games that they were able to pick up the Zagara and they won all three of those games. Uh, here this time around, we see Diablo being banned out as well by Prospectus MY2 with FFK Gaming, uh, a hero that they've had a lot of success with. All right, awesome stuff. And um, do note that the Diablo Tyrell getting banned out on the Prospector site. And for FFKG, they also banned on Zagara Moradin. So those heroes are not allowed to get picked up. And for FFKG, I like the Rega pick a lot. And I think that Jaina getting picked up here could be them just, you know, reflecting and uh, making the better decision overall. For Prospector, though, Taronda, Johanna, Rainer, Greymane. Severe lack of synergy, but that's what we said about the game just now, right? Mm -hmm. That they didn't have synergy with the heroes. Uh, still a solid drop, but they just didn't have synergy there. And I think they managed to pull it off. So here, Anubarak, as well as uh, Jaina, ETC, uh, those are heroes that could provide some form of lockdown. Of course, the Cone of Cold is going to come from Jaina, Anubarak with double stuns there, the Impel to Barrel Charge, ETC with Power Slide. I really like this lineup from, from FFKG. Mm -hmm. And Prospectus MY, this is interesting. The Shadow pick of the Malfurion here. Do you think this fits into their lineup? As we mentioned, you know, it, they don't. Th their compositions never have this synergy that we see during the draft. But somehow it, they make it work. Uh, and this time along with the Greyman, Reyna, Johanna, as well as Tirande, and now Shadow picking this Malfurion. This is interesting because Tirande doesn't really have a solid partner like a Diablo uh, oh. or an ETC to follow up with. Nah, they're just trolling it. So they end yeah. up going up with the Uta instead. So lots of sustain that. here for Team Pros. I hate that. They, I, I hate that they trolled us. Uh, <laughs> Malfur and Tiranda would have been a very good combo as well uh, in my heart. It's yep. not good on paper because Malfurion is just a great solo healer. You don't really want to have a Malfurion stack of Tiranda. I think that's a bit too much. Uh, in terms of heals and lack of damage. Now, for uh, for me, why I say it's good for me because I think I like Malfurion to run because of the lore and lore related reasons. Those that's a, that's a, that's the Stormridge family, so um, that's one good reason why you should have them on the same team. But apart from that, Uther to run, I like that a lot. I think that this is a lot of single target heals coming out here. It's gonna be very hard for FFKG to burst down one target. It's gonna be up to Jaina to catch multiple targets, and I think that um, it's also good for Anubrag and Cocoon. The main reason, though, why they did not want to go through with the Malfurion, it's because Anubrag Cocoon hard counters Malfurion Tranquility. It cancels out Tranquility's effect, and you are locked in there. So that is a huge counter against Malfurion, and I don't think that Prospectus is going to play up using uh, such a huge disadvantage. Yep, definitely agree with you there. Uh, I was just about to say that, in fact, Anubarak's Cocoon uh, just really takes away the Malfurion, because Malfurion is one of my most played supports as well. It's a hero that I, I enjoy playing, because uh, I'm a WoW player, if you, 
if you didn't know. So I play WoW a lot, and I love the Druid heels, you know, the AOE heels and the uh, <laughs> HOTs, the HOTs, you know. Right. It's uh, one of those heroes that I, I enjoy playing, so I like the Malfurion. Uh, but I have to agree with you that the Cocoon is a really hard counter to that. You know, you can pop your tranquility, he cocoons you, you're basically useless for the next four or five seconds or until your team breaks you out. And yeah, so I have to agree with you on that, on that one. Yep, and it also does not uh, reset the cooldown on Tranquility, your Tranquility duration continues on, that's the problem. So it doesn't yep. heal your teammate, you're locked in somewhere, and that Tranquility has got a hundred seconds plus, I think, an obscenely long cooldown. Um, that's the problem I have with uh, picking Malfurion into another brag. Yep. Uh, if, it, if it went the other way, then that's, you know, that's fine. Now, here we actually will be waiting for uh, the game to begin. It's the ace match on Towers of Doom, the one match to decide them all. Um, I mean, this is also the battleground which we saw uh, Team Prospector win against FFKG. Uh, so yep. I keep getting the, uh, the acronym wrong. I keep thinking it's FFGK, uh, KKFG, <laughs> and, and I'm think I think I'm not doing you a favor by saying it wrong, but it's uh, Fong Fei K Gaming. So that's FFKG. Yep. All right, so FFK, um, this is also the battleground that started at Ascend. And yep. they started losing games here, so I hope that they are mentally ready to go into this one. This uh, 2000 ringgit that's on the line is also yep. uh, the number one seed out of Malaysia that's most important because seeding is going to decide your advantage going to the SA Regional. And Regional is where it decides one team's uh, opportunity uh, to compete in the world stage, and that's going to be big. Yep, no leaming, though. Yep, no leaming. No leaming again. And it wasn't banned. It wasn't banned. They just don't care. Malaysians do <laughs> not care about leaming, while the rest of the world are all snatching leamings. They just ignore her completely. Uh, we're lacking behind a little bit, you know. You, you guys are up ahead there. We're just like, you know, we play our game here. Uh, we, we don't really <laughs> want the leaming. So <laughs> we'll leave that for like, that headache for later, you know, when we actually go up against it. Uh, but yeah, I have to agree you. It's really weird. Uh, but instead, we do see the Jaina at least this time picked up by KKFG. Uh, FFK. You see, you got me confused now. I, I'm saying it wrong too. I said KKFG too. So yeah, FFKG. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be a really interesting game. It is the final match of this. Uh, you know, Team Prospectors and why they're riding that momentum. They've won the last two games, you know. Uh, Team FFKG definitely has to be a little bit, uh, what, what's the word, discouraged from that uh, with the last two lo losses. But hopefully they will be able to keep the composure, pull things back together. And hopefully we don't have a laggy issue again, a, a ping issue yeah. again in this game. I like the Anubarak pickup. I, I think that the Anubarak at least would be able to provide a, a numbers advantage going to a fight. And uh, I think that that is really important when you're up against a uh, Uther, Taranda heal. Um, this is going to be exciting for me. There's a lot of uh, pride, ego, money, seeding that's on the line. And this is the best of one. So the last game, guys, thank you very much for tuning in and staying with us throughout this entire broadcast. We've been casting for, um, I think, close to nine and a half hours now. Yep. So... Appreciate that you guys are still here. Thank you very much for all of you who joined us uh, the entire day here. Yep, I definitely want to thank you guys for this opportunity as well. I have to say, though, I'm really hungry. I haven't eaten anything all day aside from a Kit Kat bar. <laughs> Man, you are the real champion because I had food just now. So Lucky you. <laughs> Okay, we're now going to Towers of Doom. It's finally coming to an end. This is definitely the last game, guys. We're now going into Towers of Doom. And on the blue team, in this ace match, once again, is the standard pause. Yep. But uh, before that, on the blue team, we do have Sephiria playing as the Jaina, Mofalicious playing as the Felstad, Doll Eater will be playing as the Regar, Om Nom Nom onto the ETCs, Turns 84 will be playing as what looks like the Anubarak. Yep, and over on the red side, we do see FZFZ on the Johanna, Fubbly Wobbly on Tirande, Deadly Fat Man on that grey main, Exist is going to play playing on his staple Uther, and MNGPK is going to be on that Reyna. It does seem like they are again having ping issues, and trust me, the players are as frustrated as we are as casters and you are as viewers. Nobody likes a ping issue, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to get it sorted out. I'm not too sure if it's an issue with uh, the, the place that they're playing it or if it's a server issue, but yeah, it does seem like they are getting some high pings and they're trying to as usual relog until the issue is settled yep it's gonna take a while uh it should be able to fix in just a while so don't worry it's still gonna start 
very much excited that uh, we're covering this tournament for you guys. Um, that's Arctic Shadow, my co-caster. Thank you for being here today. Mm -hmm. uh, had a great time myself. I hope you did as well. Of course, man. Yep, and also that uh, myself, Babel. We're, we are both doing this for the last nine and a half hours. We're very, very tired. We are saying this is enough. Following <laughs> Malaysian traditions. They like to play rubber set games, so we have a rubber set game, and I'm just, I'm just excited, man. I'm just excited, and I'm just thinking that this will be the last game of today. Uh, next week, though, do, uh, do tune in again because next week we do have the Philippines Nationals on Saturday, I think, and on Sunday it will be the Thailand Nationals, yep. of which we're gonna decide two teams from each of those countries, and a total of eight teams will be playing on the fifth and sixth of March. Uh, same channel, by the way. Just tune into this channel, and you will be tuning into the SEA regionals. Very Do you exciting. know if it's going to be online for them, or is it going to be LAN as well for them over there? Uh, this is what this is what I heard. Uh, in every country, there will be a viewing party slash uh, location for the participants to report to, and in okay. that in that location is where they're going to play the games online. So there will not be any uh, flying. There will not be any uh, air travel. Uh, nobody's flying anywhere, and we are all going to a designated location within our country okay. to, uh, to actually cover this event. I am not sure where we are actually casting this, so <laughs> <laughs> this don't ask me that question. <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave the producers to decide. I, I think it's not decided yet, and once that's done, then yeah, we'll have more information for you. But it will be an online tournament where... Latency may be a problem, but uh, regardless, they're all going to be congregating in the same site. So if you are from Southeast Asia, do go down to one of these locations and catch yourself the uh, Southeast Asia Regional. There's a viewing party there. There's uh, games every single hour, I hear. Uh, there's also a lot of site activities. There's also, the, um, uh, there's also your own national team playing. Uh, yeah. the, there's just a lot of action the entire weekend, 5th and 6th of March. Sounds like a lot of fun. I might be, you know, I'm really looking forward to that as well. So hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to get more information about that soon. Uh, definitely would be interested to check it out or give it a go. Unless I'll be casting, of course. So it depends. You will have to see. We'll have to see. Um, okay, that said, uh, guys, we're very happy to have you here. And uh, let us know which team you support. And I know Toho Dakila has been supporting Prospectus. So that's very clear for me. Uh, <laughs> I think... I think it's also time to ask Arctic Shadow this question. Who do you want to represent your country, like the top seed? The game just began, though. Uh, just let me know which team you support. Um, for me, of course, I would favor FFKG. You know, the, the, the way they've been playing so far and their aggressive plays uh, is definitely something that I enjoy watching. Uh, unfortunately, they have seemed to be a bit shaky in the last two games. Hopefully, they will be able to weed out and iron out a little bit of that. Uh, and yeah, you know, this is the map that led to the descent, as you mentioned. Hopefully, they were able to redeem themselves on this map, uh, in fact. So we'll have to just wait and see as now the game is about to roll out. Yep, all right. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the ace match in the Malaysia finals. It's only going to be one of this team that will get the top seed and the extra cash. The Moolahs on the line. Daily Fatman there on the grey main with the Ghanaian cocktail connecting very, very well, I think, doing some form of AoE burst. And, I mean, I agree with you. I think F uh, FFKG has been doing a great job this entire tournament. But myself, I'm actually going to be rooting for... FFKG, so I hope that they actually win this year. Mofolish yeah, is getting completely distracted by that B walk. He deserved to die there. Like, he should <laughs> have known that was an indication that he got to run. <laughs> yeah. No, he didn't do that. <laughs> that was pretty obvious. They cleared the middle lane and they were definitely disappeared. And when players disappear, you have to be a little bit more aware. You have to be, be a bit more careful. He should have waited by his gate, but instead, he was too focused on taking down those creeps and trying to clear the wave. And that led to the kill uh, for the red team. So an early first kill for the red team, pulling them slightly ahead here. Uh, I just hope Anur Barak doesn't have suffered the same fate. No, he will be able to borrow away uh, to safety and he should be fine there. So not the best of targets for the red team to be going after. But more felicious, man. Uh, he needs to be careful. All right. Now, again, you see Doll Leader mid lane uh, clearing the lane quickly with the Lightning Shield. Pretty good job so far. Level 3 just hit by Prospectus. In terms of talent options for you guys who are concerned, it looks very, very standard, except for Taranda's Season Marksman. 
that, my friends, is sign of trouble. Because you, she should be going for Ranger's Mark, uh, but she didn't go for that. Uh, I think Caesar Marksman means that this will be a right click to run the build. And right click to run this can actually really fail. So I hope that it works. And the funny thing is that Rainer actually go went for Give Me More instead. So the guy that's supposed to do the damage went for uh, protection, and the guy that's supposed to give the protection decided to go for damage. damage and that's, yeah. how, that's how it is. <laughs> Here at this middle lane, though, we do see Johanna trying to get a pick off at uh, Sephiria and playing the Jaina, but it's not going to happen here. As ETC now could well. be in some trouble. Going to get stunned out there. Chain stunned to follow suit, but he will be able to power slide away. Here hit Johanna getting bursted heal up so nicely. Doll Ether could be in some trouble as he's trying to get away, but he will not be able to. As now ETC running for his life with the last hit, and he will be able to get away. Uh, Unfortunately for them, they are going to lose this altar after already losing the other one. And that's just not too good for the blue one. The blue team losing the first two altars this early on. The red team doing a really good job there. And the heals coming off of this red team, man. Just just really, really strong. Yeah, I mean, that is an MVP Johanna Shuglair. FZ, FZ going into the position there. Even though he just overextended and he knew he's going to be in a lot of trouble, he just went in, shield glare, cancelled the channeling, and that's what got the team the extra um, the extra altar there, extra 4 damage on the core. Now you also see that the red team, Prospectus, they just got the uh, siege cam on top. This is going to be really good for them. Daily Famine, however, in a little bit of trouble there with some razor swipes and uh, duck flight. Unfortunately, not able to do any damage onto Feldstad. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, the blue team is still in front of EXP as the red team will be able to pick themselves up a camp bottom lane, though Anu Barak has to be extremely careful. Uh, as he, we do see a rotation going from the red team, but that's just going to be it, I believe. Uh, and yeah, they will be able to pick up a camp of their own. Uh, the blue team slightly ahead. It does look like they uh, are pressuring the top courts, the towers at the top lane. So yeah, it, it seems yep. to just be a back and forth right now between the two of them. Uh, so far, it is going to be a pretty even game, and we have Prospectus uh, about half a level behind. Stearns, though, taking a bit of a damage coming in from this uh, Exist, the Uther player in the, in the bottom lane. So far, already seeing the rest of FFKG with a bit of rotation. They still have the lead so far. Gonna have to really hold back this bunch of uh, mercenaries because they will be able to do a lot of structural damage. Jaina swings by and instantly solves the problem. Stern's though is at 45% HP, got pulled back. Um, mid lane, we're seeing the rest of Prospector doing a pretty good job with some rotation. Altus spawning, it's gonna be mid and bottom Altus. Yep, mid and bottom altars indeed it is. As we see, Om Nom Nom now going to run into that Johanna, but nothing at all that he's going to be able to do. And with the amount of burst healing uh, that this red team has, I don't think they're going to be able to actually take one down that quickly. They have to actually try and sustain as long as they can, though it's going to be really, really hard for them. It does look like Deadly Fat Man is going to start channeling at the bottom. We do see Falstaff at the middle lane here, though, uh, channeling as well. Anu Barak, though, he's just going to try and hit onto that Johanna, but that's not going to be it. And yeah, neither team just giving way. Neither team budging right now. He just heard the boss spawning on his bell ground. Two men stunned by Om Nom Nom, the ETC going in pretty good job there. Uh, FZ FZ onto the Johanna. Nothing much can do in that instance. The Altus already getting uh, summoned up. Your daily fat man trying to channel this one in the bottom area. Anubarak is going to be there. Safiria going in. The borrow charge a little bit too expensive to use just like that. But still he's going to be able to stay fine. Safiria not so much. A nice impale coming from Anubarak. Dolly they're dropping a lot more HP. And all of a sudden daily fat man is able to go in. Fobbly wobbly waiting for the Luna Flare. Not going to use it. But there goes the Gilnean cocktail and Ragar's gone. Om nom nom. Three men stun. Blizzard coming out. A lot of damage against the raid team. Now daily fat man pulling back. All of a sudden FFKG finds themselves chasing. Chasing after this uh, Prospector team on the red side and Johanna's definitely left for dead as well and it looks like it's a 3 for 1 exchange if they can kill this Johanna which they should be able to do so yes they are 3 for 1 it is and they also will be able to get some extra damage out yeah, here we see the Grey Man though, just being a bit too ballsy, trying to delay this as much as he can. I don't think he's going to be able to do so for much longer. Uh, we do see the outcome. Oh, he's actually going to miss there. And they will be able to channel that altar down. So both core health at 32 right now, uh, while the blue team gets a really good advantage in their levels. One full level advantage, and they will be able to get the hero talent uh, really, really soon. And just it's going to uh, propel them further in front. They definitely want to take some fight, try to force the fight through, uh, and maybe bring the fight to the red team. That's what they need to do right now after that good clash at the bottom lane. 
Yep, okay, so right now you can see that there's a very, very nice strategy at play. Uh, both teams just doing whatever they're gonna get level 10, but FFKG already being level 10, they decided to play slightly more aggressive. And that means that they're gonna try and catch uh, catch up respect as well as push the bottom. This is the FFKG that we saw the entire day. Not the sleep shot, you know, whatever it is that happened in the last two matches. Um, here we actually have them rotating very aggressively. Yeah, we see the water elemental though being picked up by Jaina along with the Mighty Gust, Ancestral Healing as well as Cocoon by Anoparak. ETC hasn't decided yet, but he just now does, uh, and he will be able to pick up the Mosh Pit. Pretty standard across all, aside from uh, the Ring of Frost not being picked up and Water Elemental instead. What do you think about that pickup? Okay, um, I like Water Elemental a lot. I think it's the correct pickup for Jaina. I think Ring of Frost is, is a very big hit or miss, and mm -hmm. there's a calculation that I think with... Uh, Northern Exposure, Ring of Frost, along with the Frostbitten trait, actually does a total of 1.6k damage. Uh, for Vala, I think that after that, you're left with about close to 400 HP left, and that's a really bad amount. Anubarak just died on screen there, guys. Um, but yep, that's about it. So although you can do that much amount of burst, but I think Water Elemental level 20, which will be a huge talent here upgrade for uh, Jaina and in terms of uh, overall just statistic advantage I would think that Water Elemental is still the better one a lot of extra slow ap applying a lot of chill and just overall consistent uh, spaced out damage Yep, I have to agree with you on the hit or miss for the Jaina uh, Ring of Frost. And over on the uh, red team, though, we do see Blessed Shield being picked up, Shadow Stock along with Go for the Throne, uh, Divine Shield, and Hyperion. Nothing out of the ordinary here as a clash is about to happen. FZFZ finding himself in a really sticky situation. He has to be really careful, though. Jaina is in the fray of things, and he's dropping really, really low. Superior has to be careful here. Moshpit is going to connect on one, but they are keeping him alive. Rain is being kept alive for so long. He's finally going to get taken down, though. Faust is going to be able to barrel roll away. He's in some he was in some trouble there the blue team has a whole huge chokehold on this team fight right now as tyranny trying to run away with his life anub Arak oh. stun gonna connect them too gonna follow it up with another stun there as now the mighty guy's gonna be used as will trying to take down the uther and uther's probably gonna fall here nowhere that he can go to nice body box being used as well and the nice two kill uh clean kill for the blue side uh as the red team now still trying to contest is not willing to give away this altar just yet Yep, there we have it. Uh, Johanna going into a wall and probably just dying there. Anubarak also going down Villefem and probably also going to die as well. Fubbly Wobbly is all that's left. We've got MNGBK behind us, but it's not going to be a healer. There goes to Ronda. A very easy turn of events there. 3 for one exchange at the end of it. Um, still, I'd like to say that that would have been very different if Raynor had Relentless Leader. But they are so far behind. Level 11 up against FFKG's level 13. And they are also currently 4 HP behind. The beautiful thing about Towers of Doom is that there is not much of a lead you can boast about. It's always going to be up to the HP core. And mm -hmm. at this, um, at, sorry, the core HP, at, at this instance here, it looks to be very even still. Yep, it does still look to be very even, though the blue team has a quite a big advantage, a full two level gap advantage here uh, for the blue team. And it's the red team there, I, I don't know, really know, I, I have to question their the judgment to stay in the fight as long as they could there. They actually disengaged. They should have just given up the altar, but instead Johanna went back in uh, and the rest of the team came back as well. And that led to a further two kills uh, for the blue side uh, with them still losing the altar as well. That just gave them a huge boost there uh, in the level gap. Okay, now level 12 for Pros, uh, or rather Prospector. Uh, they need to get a level 13 and that's not going to be achieved if all five of them stick at the bottom area now. Uh, Johanna popping the iron skin, pulling back out once again. Mofalicia throwing in a hammer rank, but not going to get a kill on the Greyman. Greyman dropping a lot of HP. Lightning Rod is doing so much work, but he duck flights out of it. Will be okay. Now, half of his HP is already gone. He has to go up to the top lane to soak up some EXP. You saw the mercenary pumpkin heads just doing a lot of structural damage against the tower as well as gate. Om Nom Nom goes in for a stun. A bit of a reverse cu stun coming out from the uh, Tarana player, Fubbly Wobbly, there with the Lunar Flare. And it is not going to be enough for a forward push, but I think it is going to be enough to set up a fight. If they are still going to hang around, that's a big problem. Now, Iron Skin not available there for Johanna, but a Hyperion already coming out. A lot of bunch of AoE damage coming out here quickly from Prospector. And there's still not enough crowd control to keep them in place for the Hyperion to do its work. Unfortunately, Blessed Shield was not available. Here comes Greymane, and we also see Lunaflare connecting on the ETC, but still a lack of damage on that part. 
Yeah, just lots of sustain coming up from the red team through the blue turn to run there. Just keeping the team alive. Johanna was like just not willing to die then. The blue team was just so frustrated. They wanted, they kept trying to go for the kill, but unfortunately they made the right decision in backing out. Now this ETC could be in some trouble here. Missing the power slide onto no heroes. Mosh pit as well, just not hitting anyone. Om nom nom, what are you doing? Cocoon is gonna be used in the back lines onto the Johanna, but thankfully for him, he's gonna be able to cap be kept alive. Now the uh Grey Man is going for the kill onto Amnob Arak, but he's gonna be able to survive. Divine she's gonna be popped on to Greyman as well and after all that still no kills from either side not too sure what ETC was trying to do there om nom nom again maybe just fatigue coming in after a long day of play but power slide missing everything and then mosh pit just hitting you know air <laughs> yep uh, that is insane so we are now having the towers opening up and the towers upgrading as well. Sorry, the tunnels opening up and the towers upgrading as well. And uh, the rest of Prospector is going in to the right, to the left side of this battleground, knocking onto the siege camp, probably able to pick this one up. Stearns is calling for backup, and I think it's all here in the nick of time, but it will not go in to put up a fight. This is going to be tricky. I don't think that this camp is going to do or rather achieve anything much. Okay, some tower damage. That's actually a lot of tower damage. Uh, but red team just going to pick up their own siege camp and for daily famine he's going back up to the top lane to, to suck up some lane exp but the level difference is really really huge right now three level difference and 16 up against 14 this is where you have got one full talent here up Yep, the blue team definitely wants to try and pick a fight here because they are in a really good position. It does look like they're trying to go for the fort with we see Greyman at the top getting taken down uh, by that solo Mofolicious be playing the Fausta. Really good pickoff for him. And he's going to be able to fly down to that bottom to help out right. the rest of his team. They probably can definitely go for the fort here. As we see the Cocoon going to be used onto that Johanna. He's stuck in there and he's probably going to get taken down here as well. Look at the amount of burst damage coming out for him. Divine Shield going to be popped though. And now ETC could be in some trouble. Power Slide in and he's in a fray of things and he's going to get it taken down. No, the heal from Rhaegar is going to pop him right back up as Falstar is trying to take down the Tyrande. Johanna still well and alive. Uh, Greyman is going to be popping out soon as well. So they have to be extremely careful not to overextend here for this fort. Anubarak stun not going to connect into anything. And after all that, still no kills from either side. Yeah. Both playing a really sustainable lineup, I would have to say. Okay, Johanna now a little bit of trouble. And there goes the Luna Flare not doing much. Om Nom Nom still has got a stun though. But Johanna pulling back once again. Popping the Iron Skin will be okay. Daily Fem is swinging by with Dark Flight on the Grey Main. Not achieving anything once more. And it looks like that's about it. But that was a pretty, pretty confusing fight. Like nobody <laughs> dying on both sides at the end of it. That is surprising. Now actually not over. They're still giving chase here. And this is not going to kill anyone. Yep. Still a two level at time advantage for the blue team though. And yeah, I have to agree with you at the bottom lane. After all that that happened, no one actually went down. Just the amount of sustainability from both sides, you know, just keeping them alive. Johanna was caught in the cocoon there. I don't think that uh, Anuparak's cocoon should be used on Johanna that much though. He seems to be the only target so far that Anuparak has shown his cocoon on, on. And I don't really agree with that. I would think that they would try to maybe CC one of the heals instead. As now we see Om Nom Nom going to be able to find them as they try to take down the, the red camp here. Anuparak going to be able to join in the fray of things. They're going to try to block out uh, the red team from taking this camp. Doll Eater trying to pressure the blue team, the red team a little bit more. And here we see ETC doing what he does best. Om Nom finally going to be able to zone out the red team and they will still that mercenary camp at that bottom lane. Yeah, I, I really like the fact that the red team had so much water, ele water elemental discipline. They were always able to pick up the water elemental before anything else. And here they realize it's not going to be worth it to lose uh, or rather to hard contest the siege camp. They decided to give it up for the blue team though, because they have the level lead, they decided to go for the boss camp. And this is where it's really going to be interesting because if they get this one, it's only four damage. And nothing more than that. It does not win games. It's only 16 against 32, which means that uh, Prospecta, they are currently at half HP compared to FFKG. All tech going to spawn in about 20 seconds, and that's where the fight's going to be. Yep, everyone's just going to get back, tap on the well, get back up some HP and some mana, and the rest of the team is going to converge onto this altus here. I do believe they want to go for this. I th They have a two-level advantage, though they are on the same talent tiers. Again, Johanna getting caught here. I don't think Cocoon is going to be used on him instead. Here we see the Anubara going in with the stun here. Johanna going to follow up with its own stun. Hyperion is going to be used here, and Cocoon is oh. going to be thrown on Johanna. Moshpit is going to connect them too. If Divine Shield is going to be thrown onto Greyman, as Greyman is trying to do as much work as he can. Healing by Rhaegar is going to pop ETC right back up here as Ice 
this bus gonna be used. Johanna could be in some trouble though. He's dropping really low. Daily Fat Man though in the fray of things. He's gonna get taken down really low, but with the burst healing yet again by that Uther, he's gonna be able to stay alive. And the blue team, no one did just yet. Down goes the Greyman though after overextending a little bit too far. Reina gonna follow suit. Uther in some trouble here. He's gonna get pushed back by the face melt by Omnom here, and he's gonna get taken down as well. A four-man team wipe for the blue team. And they're gonna get two altars as well. They have a huge commanding lead, and they're gonna hit that level 20 really, really soon here, Babel. Yeah, this is the problem. Uh, I think that Grey Main did a great job in the beginning of the fight, you know, with all the kiting left, right, center, and pulling back once again. But the problem began when he overextended. He should have just used this engage, went back into Grey Main, a human form, and then used Gilnean Cocktail and just basically kite using the right click damage. That would have been a lot better for me. Uh, right now, it looks like FFKG is already at 32 up against 8 of uh, Prospector. Prospector is still very far away from claiming victory and they've been losing team fights after team fight. I think it's going to be up to level 20. The biggest key thing right now is for them to really focus on getting level 20 because at that point on, it's going to be an even game. But from now till then, FFKG, they will have the advantage. And I think the next wave of Alta spawning should be about 2 or 3. So that will be probably a huge uh, advantage and chance for FFKG to, to seal the deal. Yeah, but time is ticking down for the uh, team uh, cross Prospector Gaming MY as well as they are able to take down the top fort, but so does the blue team. They will be able to take down the bottom fort. Level 20 already up onto the blue team. As you see, the camps at the bottom, they are going to do another three more damage here. And this is going to be interesting. This is where uh, the blue team are going to try and pressure as much as they can. The red team now with the threat of so many things looming, they're just now down to that 7 core HP. They have to worry oh about those God. camps being pushed in. They have to worry about those uh, altars spawning soon as well. This is going to yeah. be really, really dangerous for them. So they escorted three pumpkin heads and they dealt a total of three damage there. Now it's up to five HP on the core for Prospector. Can they still win this? Three altars spawning. This is not good news at all. Can they buy enough time? It has to be a team wipe against FKG that has got level 20. They are in for a fight right now. FZFZ pulling in the underbreak of the Condemn. Probably Wobbly going into Luna Flare. This is going to be an easy kill if the underbreak does go down, but he pops the heart and shield. It's not going to be easy all of a sudden. Nom nom nom. Again with the power slide going in. Hyperion coming back out, doing a lot more work. Three seconds before the altar spawn. They have to defend at least two to stay relevant and alive in his game. Now FZFZ pulls back. Just a lot of damage coming from the Northern Exposure pickup. Pulse level 16, Sephiria getting a bit of disengaged there from that shield glare. Daily Fat Man picks up a lot of that uh, damage on the right side coming from the altar. Bottom altar also soft already. All that's left here is the left altar. They have to stop this, but the Mighty Gust Wind Tunnel, it's going to be good enough. And that means that it is a total of four damage going in. It's still a three-man mosh pit. MNGPK trying to stay alive, but Reina will go down. And that's it. We still see the Grey Main with that Divine Chill up already exists, dropping a lot more HP in the cocoon. It looks like it is going to be Johanna, and all that's left is going to be Johanna as well as Grey Main. They both don't have enough to take this entire team. There is the possibility that Uther is able to keep her alive and Greymin goes down finally in the nick of time. All they need to do now is just pick up three forts and win this game. Not an easy task, but there is no pushing, so that's the beautiful part about this game. Maybe they can pick off this uh, mid-area camp and that can actually do some damage to the core if they ex escort it all the way. That's yep. gonna have to see. It does look like that's what they're planning on doing. They're trying to take down the bottom fort with 30 seconds left on the grain main to respawn and about 10 seconds on average for the rest of the team. It does look like they're going to pick up on those pumpkin heads as you said and this could be it here. They're just going to go for a full five man push at the bottom and Johanna's going to try and stop those pumpkins as best as he can. He can clear them off pretty fastly though. So they have to be really careful but he does not want to go in just like that. He's going to get taken down and I believe this is going to be GG. Pumpkin heads are going to get through here and there you go. It is going to be GG. Game over and Team F FK Gaming will take the championship and the first seed in the upcoming regional finals if they are able to make it. They went all the way down to the wire. At the end of it, they decided to lose it all. This has been a very, very questionable game. We got, uh, we're actually going to see if we got a replay for the last fight. Um, but yep, I mean, if you look at the entire gameplay, it's just FFKG being on top of Prospectus. And I think that Prospectus did whatever they can to stay alive, but just insufficient damage, just always uh, not being in the right spot and just very slow level 13. They had 
they would work without relentless leader against mosh pit and they didn't have the spacing for that that's the problem we got a replay actually and we're gonna bring it out right now so if you if you look at the, the replay right here uh they they actually managed to pick to take up both the altars in the bottom area and on the right side that's really remarkable but this is where Mofolicious wind tunnel was really really good and i think johanna could have done this slightly better if she sidestepped to the bottom side instead um, Mofolicious here with the wind tunnel fubbly wobbly looking for the lunar flare unfortunately could not get within range um, that is the sad news and a three man mosh pit Tarunda already dead Ragar doing a lot of work with all those heals right here keeping the entire team alive uh, the damage deal is already gone Rainer is gone Grey main now is all that's left Uther is down as well Cocoon being so effective at just disabling one target Anubarak is still relevant somehow and you see the Jonah pullback? Yep, that, that's the last guy that's alive in this game. That said, they did the smartest thing possible in how to win this game. And that's basically by getting the bottom for it, getting that uh, siege camp, pumpkin heads will fire, and GGWP game over. Yep, and ultimately the blue team FFK Gaming will be the champions of it all after a long and grueling day. After countless fights from Prosecutor MY, they will be able to pull themselves back in as best as they can, but unfortunately for them, they just came out short, barely uh, able to make it past this. And now FFK Gaming will be the champions, taking home 5,000 ringgit and the first seed in the upcoming C region uh, spring championships. Okay, awesome stuff. Guys, we are finally done with today's tournament. And this is the moment for shoutouts. First of all, shoutouts yeah. to sponsors Razor. Thank you for being a, a, our sponsor for the Spring Championship in the Southeast Asia Qualifier. Losing my mind here after 10 hours. Anyway, <laughs> um, shoutouts to you guys for tuning in. Thank you very much for being here and being a part of our Malaysia journey. Um, next up, shoutout to Arctic Shadow. Thank you for joining <laughs> me on this cast together. And hopefully there's many more to come in the future as well. Uh, give him your love. Uh, hope you guys enjoy this entire tournament as much as I did. And just shouting out to the schedule for next week. We actually got ourselves Philippines and Thailand uh, next Saturday and Sunday. That's going to happen somewhere between 12 p.m. GMT plus 8 and uh, your time zone. So do the necessary conversions. Uh, that would actually be, if I'm not wrong, it should be 5 a.m. European time as well as uh, 8 a.m. Is it no 8 p.m. West Coast time and 12 p.m. East Coast? Yeah, I've done conversions for you guys. That's it. There is also a game that's happening by the site right now, and that is actually the uh, Super League from Korea. I just lost Arctic Shadow. His webcam just poof. Yeah, but, he um, disappeared. <laughs> yeah, he just went away. Oh, he's back. Here we oh. go. Uh, but there's a Super League going on, casted by, uh, by Artosis. So please do tune into that one and support them as well. Uh, that's MVP Black, some say the best team in the world, up against uh, Team Hero or something like that. Um, this is Babel, Arctic Shadow. Please take away your shoutouts, please. I don't have any shout out. Shout out to you, man, for taking me and shout out to the Aegisoft team for giving me this opportunity to, to cast alongside you. It was a joy. Uh, I learned a lot. Shout out to my team, TTC, who's always been there uh, to support me as well. So, yeah, definitely looking forward to more cast with you, man. Seriously. Same here. Awesome. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. We'll see you again next week. Have a good weekend or whatever that's left of it. See you guys. Anything, and it seems like it's a good pushback coming out from the red team. Now Stern's now dropping a lot of HP as well. Thrall will go down at the end. Strip coming in from the back line. Daily Fat Man missing the Gilnean cocktail. FCFZ goes in with the Dove Toss. Stuns two man. And a lot more damage coming from that Grey Mean already. You see, go for the throat being used, but not very effective. Will still go down at the end. And at GPK now getting healed back by Exist. And the Morales with the aggressive positioning just to make sure that she has enough time to heal up the teammate. But all the jams on the floor. And Sephiria Mofolicious seems 